Hello and welcome to an Affinity Revolution tutorial. My name is Ezra Anderson, and today we're going to create a flat design character, and then we'll learn how to add shading to it. To begin our design, let's make the man's head. To do this, we'll select the rounded rectangle tool and click and drag to make a rounded rectangle. Then I'll use the orange circle to increase the roundness of this rounded rectangle. Now I'll come to the color panel and give my rounded rectangle a skin color. Then we'll remove the stroke of the rounded rectangle by selecting the stroke and then pressing on this no fill icon. Then I'll place my cursor on the edge of the rounded rectangle so I can position it in the center of the document. Next, we'll work on the man's hair. To do this, we'll select the ellipse tool. While holding down shift, I'll click and drag to make a perfect circle. For my design, I'm going to give the man blue hair. Since I had the stroke selected, it's made my stroke this blue color, so I'm going to switch the stroke and fill by pressing on this arrow icon, and then I'll remove the stroke again by pressing on this icon. Then I'll position this circle in the center of the document. The hair will look much better if it's behind the man's head, so I'm going to press Send to Back. I'm going to reposition the hair a little bit more. We're going to add a few more circles to this man's hair, so I'm going to click and drag to make another circle. Then I'll position the circle. We want these next circles we make to be on top of the man's head so I'm going to press Send to Front. Then I'll press V for the Move tool, and while holding down Alt or Option, I'll click and drag on this circle to duplicate it. Then I'll make the duplicate copy a little bit bigger. I'll repeat the process by holding down Alt or Option, and while clicking and dragging, I'll duplicate the circle, and then make it a little bit bigger. I'll make one more circle, but this time I'll make it a little bit smaller. Now we're going to work on the man's face. We'll start off by making his eyes. To make an eye, we're going to select the ellipse tool. Then I'll click and drag to make a circle. I'll select this circle's fill and change it to nearly black. Then I'll duplicate the circle by pressing Command or Control J. I'll make this circle close to white. To zoom into our eye, I'll double click on one of these circle's icons in the Layers panel. I'll make this white circle a little bit smaller. Then I'll reposition it. Finally, I'll make it a child layer of the black circle so our white circle can only be visible where the black circle is. To do this, we'll drag its layer down into the right of the black circle. Now the white circle is only visible where the black one is. To see the entire document again, we'll press Command or Control Zero. Now I'll press V for the Move tool. Then I'll select our eye and position it in the center of the document. I'm going to make the eye a little bit smaller and then put it back in the center of the document. Now we'll duplicate the eye by pressing Command or Control J. We'll move this eye 50 pixels to the right by coming to the Transform panel, and on the X axis, we'll type in plus 50. Then we'll come to the original eye and move it 50 pixels to the left by typing in minus 50. By placing both of our eyes in the center of the document, and then moving them each 50 pixels on the X axis, we know that they're an equal distance from the center. I don't think 50 pixels is quite enough though, so I'm going to move each one 75 more pixels. Depending on your design, you might want to move the eyes more or less than I did. The next thing we're going to do is make our man's nose. To do this, I'll select the head and then duplicate it by pressing Command or Control J. Then I'll give this rounded rectangle a slightly darker color. Then I'll shrink it and place it in the center of the document. 
Now we'll make a mouth. To do this, we'll select the ellipse tool and make a circle. Then we'll make a rectangle using the rectangle tool. I'll position the rectangle so it's covering half of the circle. Then I'll rotate it just ever so slightly. While holding down shift, I'll select the circle so I have the circle and rectangle selected. Then I'll use the subtract boolean operation. I'll change the color of our mouth to close to black. Then I'll press V for the move tool and resize and position the mouth. To give the man a tongue, we're going to bring back the ellipse tool and then click and drag to make a circle. Then we'll make this circle a tongue color. Just as we did with the eyes, we're going to make the tongue a child layer of the mouth so it will only be visible where the mouth is. To do this, we'll come to the layers panel and then click and drag the tongue layer down into the right of the mouth layer. Next, we'll give our man some ears. To do this, we'll click and drag to make a circle and it looks like our ear has automatically been made a child layer of the mouth, so it's only visible where the mouth is. Because it's outside of the mouth, it's completely invisible. To fix this, we'll just click and drag it outside of the mouth group. I want the ear to be the same color as the skin, so I'm going to click and drag on the color picker to sample the skin color. Then I'll apply it to the ear by pressing on this icon. Now we'll duplicate this circle by pressing Command or Control J. Then we'll give this circle the same color as the nose. Now we'll make the second circle a little bit smaller. We also want to make it a child layer, so I'll click and drag it down and to the right. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see our work more accurately. Then I'll press V for the Move tool. Now I'll resize and position both of these circles. Then I'll press Command or Control 0 to see the entire document. I'm going to shrink the ear a little bit and then place it on the side of the man's head. I'll duplicate this ear by pressing Command or Control J. Then I'll bring this ear over to the right side. We'll need to flip this ear horizontally so it's facing the correct direction. To do this, we'll click on Flip Horizontal. Then I'm going to bring in both of these ears by holding down Shift and using the arrow keys. For this ear, I'll hold down Shift and click on the left arrow key three times. Then I'll select the other ear, and while holding down Shift, I'll click on the right arrow key three times. Then I'll send both of these ears to the back. Now it's time to work on our design's shading. We'll start by adding shading to the man's head. First, we'll select the head. Then we'll duplicate it by pressing Command or Control J. Just so we can see what we're doing, I'm going to drag this duplicate head over to the left side. We need one more copy of the head, so I'll press Command or Control J once more. As you can see, the third copy of our head has moved the same distance to the left as we moved the second copy. This is a function of Affinity Designer called Power Duplicate. We actually wanted both of these heads to be on top of each other, so I'm going to press Command or Control Z to undo. To stop this from happening, all we need to do is click anywhere off of the rounded rectangle, and then when we select it again and duplicate it by pressing Command or Control J, then it will stay in place. Power Duplicate will only happen if you don't deselect the item you're duplicating. We're now going to bring this third duplicate copy up and to the right. To do this, I'll hold down Shift and click on the up arrow key three times. Then while holding down Shift, I'll click on the right arrow key three times as well. Now I'll select both of the rounded rectangles and use the Subtract Boolean operation. This is going to be the shadow on our man's face, so let's make it a little bit darker. Now I'll position it on the left side of the man's head. I'm going to make this shadow a child layer of the man's head 
by bringing its layer down and to the right. Right now, our shadow looks a little strong, so I'm going to lower its opacity to 70% by clicking 7 on the keyboard. Alternatively, you can type in 70% right here. Finally, we're going to work on the shadows in the man's hair. Before we do that though, I'm going to center the document, and then it looks like my shadow isn't quite touching the left side of the man's head, so I'm going to select my shadow layer and bring it a little bit to the left. I'm also going to lower its opacity to 50% by pressing 5 on the keyboard. Now we'll work on the shadows in the hair. The way this is going to work is we're going to make these four circles that we have right now become the shadows for the man's hair. That means we're going to want to make them a darker color. I'm going to select all four of these circles and then make them a darker shade of blue. Then I'll select the circle on the far left. I'm going to duplicate this circle and then give it the same color as the original hair. Now I'll move this circle up and to the right by using shift and the arrow keys. While holding down shift, I'll click on the up arrow key twice and the right arrow key twice as well. Then I'm going to make this circle a child layer of the dark circle. As you can see, we've now added a shadow to the man's hair. We'll repeat the same process for the other three circles. First, select a circle and then duplicate it. Then give it the lighter color. Then we'll move it up and to the right. And finally, we'll make it a child layer. I'll speed up the video and do the other two circles. We've now added shadows to the man's hair, but it's not looking quite right. The reason for this is this circle needs to be on top, and then this circle, this circle, and finally this circle at the bottom of the four circles. To do this, we're going to bring this circle to the top, then this circle, this one, and finally this one. Let's start off with the far right circle. With this circle selected, we'll send it to the top of the layer stack by clicking on this icon. Then we'll select the next circle and send it to the front as well. Then we'll come to the next one and do the same thing. And finally, we'll select the last circle and bring it to the top as well. We've now finished our design. You now know how to create a man's head in Affinity Designer and add beautiful shading to it.